So for the infinite square well, we need to test the two cases where energy is equal to zero and energy is smaller than zero. And then in this problem, we'll see that there are no viable solutions for these two scenarios. So the Schrodinger equation, the time-independent Schrodinger equation, tells us that this expression is equal to energy multiplied by psi. And then rearranging the constants, you can dump all these constants over here. So we have all these constants multiplied by xi. So the first case we're going to consider is when energy is equal to zero. So when energy is equal to zero, this whole term is just equal to zero. That means the second derivative of xi of x is just equal to zero. And so that means xi of x is equal to some constant plus some constant times x. So you can try differentiating this twice and you'll see that it is equal to zero. And then don't forget we also need to satisfy the boundary conditions. We need xi of 0 and xi of a to be equal to 0 in order to keep the xi of x continuous uh, because for the infinite square well, xi of x is 0 everywhere else outside of the well. So that's why the two ends should be equal to 0 in order to keep the whole thing continuous so that it sticks to the 0 uh, when it's smaller than 0 and larger than a. So we must meet this condition. And you can see that if we set the first condition when xi of 0 is equal to 0. Uh, you get b times 0, which is just 0, so you get a is equal to 0. So immediately you get a simplification. You see that xi of x is just equal to bx. And then in order to set, uh, satisfy the second condition, you have ba is equal to 0. And we know that a is not equal to 0, so b has to be equal to 0. So that means this whole thing is just equal to 0. You have 0 plus 0 times x. So this is this is obviously a solution that doesn't really work, right? Because the whole thing is equal to zero. So we can conclude that the case where the energy level is equal to zero is that does not give us any viable solutions. So now we test the second case when the energy level is smaller than zero. So let's just copy this out. So we have negative two me divided by h bar square xi. So we're going to let k be equal to the square root of negative 2me. So don't mind the negative sign here because e itself is negative. So you have negative of e, which is positive. So it's perfectly fine to take the square root, even with the negative sign here, divided by h bar. So if I define k to be this, this differential equation just becomes k squared. The right-hand side just becomes k squared times xi. And then for this differential equation, the solution is equal to a times so some constant times e to the power of kx plus some other constant b times e to the power of negative kx. So once again, we need to make sure that this xi of x satisfies this condition so that our solution is going to be continuous everywhere. So the first, first requirement, xi of 0 is equal to 0. If you substitute 0 into this expression, you get uh, a plus b is equal to 0. So if you substitute 0, this is just 1 and 1, so you have to get a plus b. So that means a is equal to negative b. So this is the first condition. Or you can also say b is equal to negative a. So that means uh, for our xi of x, we can do one step of simplification. So for the b here, I'm going to replace it with a minus a. So I can just pull the a to the outside. And now we need to satisfy the second condition. So the second condition is that xi of a also needs to be equal to 0. So xi of a, you can see, is equal to a times e to the power of ka minus e to the power of negative ka is equal to 0. So there are two scenarios where this, uh, where this equation will be satisfied. The first case is when a is equal to 0. And you know this won't work because when a is equal to 0, that means this whole thing is going to be equal to zero. This whole term is just a multiplied by this uh, this term over here. So if a is equal to zero, this whole thing is going to be equal to zero. So the entire xi of x is going to be equal to zero. So obviously that's not going to work. So we're not going to consider this. So the other, the only other uh, possible option that we have is that e to the power of ka minus e to the power of negative ka is equal to zero. And then I can just multiply both sides by e to the power of ka. So that gives me e to the power of 2ka minus 1 equal to 0. So that means I can just put the 1 over to the other side and then take the natural log of both sides. So I get 2ka is equal to the natural log of 1, which is just 0.
And then once again, we know that a is not equal to 0, so it has to be the case where k is equal to 0. And you know that this also does not make sense, because when k is equal to 0, first of all, it is already impossible, because for this expression here, we know that k, uh, in, with the case that we're considering is when k is smaller than 0. So there's no way k is going to be equal to 0. And even if k is equal to 0, you can see that uh, this, you're going to get e to the power of 0 minus e to the power of 0, which is just 1 minus 1. So it's also going to be 0. So for the case when e is smaller than 0, your xi of x is also going to be equal to 0. So that means uh, for this scenario, you, you will also not get any viable solutions.